1622, the Spanish galleon Atocha sunk off the Florida Keys, and with it a giant treasure. Matt is here to share the treasure of this story with us. The Atocha was known properly as the Nuestra Señora de Atocha. This ship was a Spanish galleon and part of the mighty Spanish fleet. The ship was built in 1620. Uh, it was 112 feet long and 34 feet wide, and it was equipped with 20 bronze cannons. In, in September 1622, the ship left Havana as part of a 28-ship flotilla headed back to Spain. These ships were carrying treasures from Spanish-controlled areas in the Americas back to Spain. The next day, while in the Florida Strait, uh, the fleet was hit by a hurricane and the Atosha was sunk. She carried a cargo of silver and gold coins, bars, large emeralds, pearls, uh, and various other treasures. There were 265 people on board when it sunk and only five of which survived. After the storm passed, the Spanish tried to salvage the cargo but were unable to. Uh, and another hurricane actually came along and scattered the wreckage. So, to the Spanish, the ship was lost. Uh, in the 1970s, the ship's location was discovered by Mel Fisher after many, many years of searching. And the recovery of the artifacts began almost immediately. Uh, after the recovery wound down, uh, the Mel Fisher Museum, Atosha Museum, was formed in Key West, Florida. After they got done cataloging the coins and marketing them, uh, they actually began selling relics from the ship in their museum. There were many, many thousands of coins that were sold uh, that had been cataloged and graded. The lower denomination stuff was turned into jewelry, pendants, rings, uh, the one and the two real coins. But the larger four and eight real coins were actually graded into four different grades uh, and then sold as collectibles to collectors. And here's a breakdown of the different grades of the coins. Grade 1 coins are typically considered to be the best of the best from the Atocha wreck. They define the Grade 1 coins as coins that are clearly struck on both the obverse and reverse sides, with the crest of the king centered, and also mint mark, uh, assay, and denomination are also often visible. Uh, the reverse cross side should be equally clear, uh, with the lions and castle readily visible. Now you have to realize that these are old cobs. I mean cobs are basically coins that were cut off of a bar and then stamped with a design. Uh, so they're all sorts of different shapes and sizes uh, but generally they weigh about the same. Grade 2 coins are similar to grade 1 except the features on the coins just aren't quite so clear. Uh, in some cases it's due to carelessness when they were struck uh, in other cases, the, uh, the action of the sea, basically the corrosion, uh, has caused some weakness in the design. Grade 3 coins show, they do start to show some of the effects of their immersion in salt water. Um, they may show full corrosion on one side and be perfect on the other, uh, or they might show light corrosion on either side. Some people like this particular grade because it really tells the history of the coin that it spent a lot of time in the ocean. Grade 4 coins typically show heavy corrosion uh, from the seawater. The details may be hard to see uh, and generally the grade 4 coins are not all that attractive. Uh, now values of these particular 4 and 8 real coins, they can vary by grade. Uh, the higher grade grade one coins, especially in the eight reals, bring seven hundred to fifteen hundred dollars on sites like eBay. The grade four coins, which are the, the dogs, usually bring oh seventy five to two hundred dollars, depending on exactly how bad they are. And I just really think that these are a really cool way to get your hands on a piece of uh a seventeenth century history. You know, this, if you ask me, is the typical story of pirate treasure. Yeah, and it's the it's like the most famous shipwreck. Most anybody, uh, well, at least that I meet, when you say shipwreck and they have the name one, you usually hear about the Atosha. It was big news when they found it. So anybody that was alive back then, you know, saw it on the news. See, but if yeah. you ask if you ask anybody I know about shipwreck, they say minnow. <laughs> That's. <laughs> they say 
<laughs> That's funny. Now I got a question. You know, as far as as far as the coins, because I remember reading about this when they discovered the wreck several yes. years ago, that they were taking um, whole chunks of coins that they found and restoring a lot of them. Correct? Yeah. What they would do is when these coins go to the bottom of the ocean, they corrode. Uh, and now they're gold and silver coins, right? Yeah, yeah, they're they're gold and silver. So it's really not the gold and the silver that's corroding in them. It's it's, it's whatever the, they're the crap clad with, um, it copper or or I'm is, not it, sure. is it is it is it more residue more, that's on the outside of them? That's I think it's more actions of sea creatures. But it could I think silver does corrode slightly under the ocean. Now gold, on the other hand, doesn't corrode all that much even in the ocean. I think silver does lightly. But yeah, these coins get fused into these big mounds. Uh, like say you had a, a small chest full of coins. If that chest stayed together during the wreck and sat on the seafloor, that chest is now one big fused mound of coins. Uh, so they would get these big ball, these big hunks of coins, and they would bring them to the surface. And then uh, through, I think it was some sort of electrical electrolysis, something like that, they were able to get the corrosion off the coins, and it kind of forms almost like a shell and protects the coins from the sea. So you, the, the coins you see a lot of the times from the Atosha have been processed, uh, but they still look pretty good, uh, and that's where the different grades come in as to what they end up with after they process them. And some of the coins that are even just completely gone, a lot of the, they made, uh, they would actually take these and melt them down same with the bars. A lot of the bars got melted. Uh, and they would turn them into souvenirs for the Atosha. They would turn them into replicas of really famous pieces they found on the ship. Um, they would turn them into just kind of wacky little uh, Mel Fisher bars. I mean, they made all sorts of different stuff. But it was all with silver that was brought back from the Atosha. And that, was that mostly because the coin, the silver as coins was pretty much unsalvageable back then yeah they weren't they weren't what they considered to be collectible pieces basically uh they didn't meet one of the grade criteria that they had and they were most of them were probably just hunks of junk um that you couldn't even after being processed you couldn't see anything on so but they did come from the ship so because i remember most of the the restored coins that i saw were weren't they graded by pcgs they were actually graded and cataloged by the Mel Fisher Museum. Okay. Uh, I'm not even sure if PCGS certifies the pieces. I'm thinking, I, you might be thinking of the Central America. I'm thinking of the Central America. Yep. That stuff, yep, did get certified through them. Now, was that just found so much later that the technology had changed and they were able to restore the coins, or was it just a difference in um, philosophy of, of the people that found it? Uh, I think it was more a difference in gold versus silver. The Atosha was mostly silver, whereas the Central America was mostly gold. And gold and silver react completely different underwater. What kind of paperwork comes with these? Or I, We already covered that, you know, PCGS and those guys didn't slap it. So um, hmm. what should a person be looking for if That's they're looking to purchase an original one of these? That is a good question, actually, because it is important. Um, they come with a certificate, a photo certificate, that shows the actual piece that you're buying, along with its certification number, something that what they call a grid number, which possibly is where they found it. Um, and it has, a, like I said, a photo with it. And then it also comes uh, in a, a flip, and then inside that flip is a small, uh, you know, two-by-two two little piece of paper that has the same information, the the the, uh, the grid number, the grade, and the assayer, and th that's that is a complete um, Atosha piece has those three pieces. Now, if it doesn't have the the larger certificate, uh, it's very possible that it's not an Atosha piece. It's also possible that it is, but they do generally bring a lot less money if you do not have the certificate. Uh, now, you if you have the the insert into the flip, uh, you can actually get in touch with the Mel Fisher Museum and they will issue a new certificate, but it is kind of expensive. I really think that if you are interested in that particular time in history, uh, and on pirates and, and treasure and, 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 yay, and the Spanish Armada, you know, these coins are just straight out of that. So I... I, I 
If that interests you, I highly recommend that you pick up an Atosha piece.